All right, I'm just going to do a quick quick video on a tie rod end on a 1966 Beetle. I've already loosened stuff up to make it a little bit quicker, hopefully. Uh, actually, I'll show you. If you look at it closely, you can see there's a lot of play right there. So we definitely want to... Uh, don't want to drive the car like that. It's the only thing that really holds you a wheel going in the direction you want to go in. Now there's usually a cotter pin in here. Someone had some other pin. I've already got that pulled out so your king nut doesn't back off once it's all in. So that's out. Now I will, uh, I gotta go grab something. I guess I can loosen up this too. Grab a tool. Pop that out. <laughs> this is the same idea as when I was doing the brakes, I mean the um, bearings on the Saturn, this is a tapered fitting in here, so you gotta break that loose. So in order to do that, not that I care about the threads of this, but I don't want it to bang it up so it doesn't come out, out through, but we gotta, hopefully just tapping that. Whoa. I guess that's a little, little more than a tap. All right, I got a ball joint tool. I will go get, and then we will uh, get back with you in just a second. Okay, so I got the tool. I actually just cracked it loose too, but I'll show you. Um, it's a ball joint tool. It's like a fork, and it's tapered, and you put it right in between here. Now, if it's a ball joint and just taking it apart to do other work, I try not to use this because it usually damages the rubber, and you don't want to do that. But uh, not, Yeah, this is not ball joint, but the tie rod. This one I don't care about, of course, because we're going to replace it. She's already gone. And you just get it in there and you whack it a few times and usually they pop right out. As you can see, that one's loose now. So I'll uh, take the king pin off the rest of the way. Then we can pop that out. The other thing we want to watch for is when we um, take this apart here. I don't know if you can see it. I might be able to shine the light up here a little bit differently but um, right here where it's threaded into the tie rod itself because we really want to take a look at how far it's in so we want to try and get it as close as we can um, when we put the new one in because this is what um, what you know adjusts your your toe and your or your you know the the straightness the alignment of your front wheel so if that's screwed in too far it's not going to be in a little bit in con you know conjunction with the other one on the other side if it's not enough then it's going to be towed in and you will chew through tires really fast. So you want to take that into account, take a look at that uh, thread. Uh, and obviously the best thing to do is to have it professionally aligned after the fact. But you want to at least get it as close as you uh, possibly can. The other thing is, is you know, this is just um, a, it's kind of a clamp around the end of the tie rod. You tighten this up. I, I've loosened it. It stops these threads from turning once you get it in place. Uh, so it keeps it all nice and tight. So I'll uh, gonna put some spray on this, let it sit, um, see my distance, and, and you know see if the new one I when I get is the same you know length. Because sometimes they are a little bit different, and uh, we'll get back with you hopefully when we start doing some assembly. So we'll be back in just a bit. Okay, so I sprayed some stuff on there, sat a little bit. Um, keep in mind so these are not always right-handed tread. In this case, it is left-handed, so you gotta turn it like you're putting it on for it to actually come off so hopefully you can see this all right but and I put a um a pipe wrench on one side here so I weren't putting any pressure on the other fittings until I got it broke loose and now I'm able to do it by hand so we took all the wrenches out of the way we'll get this one off and then we'll go down to the hardware not hardware but the auto store and see if they have one. If not, I'll have to order one online. It's a fairly common item, you know, on cars, even, you know, new ones. That, I mean, they were standard, I guess what I mean. They fit a lot of vehicles, so they may have one right down there. If not, I'll have to just order it, because clearly it's not a new vehicle. This is the 66 Beetle, so. So, um, there it is. All off. Um, and we know this piece up in here. You know, over time it's got one that doesn't have a grease fitting, so you can't grease it. So this is a sealed unit, and once they go, they go. And you just get a new one. So I'll go get a new one, 
put it in. Hopefully uh, we don't move anything. We can get as close as we can. And we will uh, have it back together. So we'll see you in a bit. Okay, so you guys don't know it, but it's actually a couple days later because I had to order this online, and while I was ordering, I ordered one for the other side too. Might as well. So this is the left-handed one. Uh, so when you put it in, you got to go in, just going it in backwards. I think you can see that all right. Just a little bit. So I have not moved um, the drum at all. And I did take some measurements on this um, before I took the other one off so we can get it as close as we possibly can. So I won't uh, record this whole thing, but you can see I'm looking to line this up in here now without moving this. But if I do bump it, then I do have some measurements. course it's definitely going to move because this is the new one is nice and tight so all right do a little bit more Okay, so I've just been going, adjusting this a little bit here and there, getting it so it would line up. I think I've got it so nothing's moved, and it pretty well drops right in there, and this has not moved. Let me just check a couple of my measurements here. That looks like it has not moved at all. So with any luck, we won't have any tire wear, and like I said earlier, you really should have it um, aligned. Whether I do that or not is another story, but... I want that to... It's a tapered, as you can see, this is the old one here. It's just tapered right here, so it's going to seat into that. And this is uh, where it goes in, is tapered as well, so she really... Uh, you want it to tighten right in there. I'm just going to measure again since I tapped that down in there. And she looks like she has not moved. So with any luck, we won't have tire wear. Like I said, I took a you know, bunch of measurements beforehand. Had an idea of where this, uh, how many th threads and the, the spacing that was left here. Um, or I can move this a little bit. The spacing that was left on the, the um, threads right here when I um, screwed the other one out, when I unscrewed it. Um, once I know I got it exactly what I want, I'm going to tighten this up, which will hold this in place. And of course, we're going to tighten up the um, nut. Now, this doesn't have a crown nut on it like the old one that uh, put a cotter pin in. The new one now is a lock nut. And probably, if you can see the nut, it's got. Um, um, just inside the nut thing, see, I think it's blue. Yeah, it's blue, and um, it's like a rubber or a plastic ring that's made right into the nut, so it helps lock it in place. I actually prefer the um, king nut myself, but the new the new uh, tie rod doesn't have a hole in it to run a king uh, run a cotter pin through like the old one did. I could drill a hole in it, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and um, tighten this up on here. And we'll uh, get this back together. The reason why I, you know, you got to tap down on this too is uh, because it's a lock nut, it's going to want to turn that, uh, the bolt. Um, but in this case... I was lucky enough that tapping it down, it seated it in that tapered, that tapered um, joint in there. So it's not turning the whole thing, but you want to watch for that. Because you want to make sure it just doesn't turn and turn. You want it to tighten up, which it is currently doing. It's tightening up really nice.
Okay. Before we go too far, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up here. Which I can. Show you what I'm tightening here. Sorry about the camera moving. Let's see. Let's show you where I'm at. It's a little line in the way. I guess this is right in the way. What I'm tightening up, I showed you earlier. Maybe it's not in the way. Bear with me here. I'm just trying to get a better angle so you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Right here. So that's what I'm tightening up which will uh, pinch down on the threads of the tie rod end so the tie rod uh, is really secure we don't want any movement <clears throat> that's just your end which is good because before this whole thing was wiggling now we can turn it and you can see, I don't know if I showed it before, but when the other one was on there, this was all wiggling around. And now, let's turn that a little bit. Now you can see it's not wiggling. It's a nice tight, nice tight connection. So what I'm doing over here, so you can see what I'm doing, is I'm actually grabbing a hold of this and I'm pulling it back and forth with both hands. And you can see, this is no longer wiggling all over the place. And that's what we wanted. So hopefully that uh, helps somebody out there. Again, this is a tie rod end replacement on a 66 Beetle. They're all pretty similar, um, the outer tie rod end. So if you liked, please like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for checking out my video.